The Army has announced that the easement for final construction of the last remaining stretch that needs to be built of the Dakota Access Pipeline could be granted as early as tomorrow, Wednesday of this week. Uh, the Deputy Secretary of the Army will grant the final permit needed for completion. Uh, this was in a court filing uh, just earlier today. Deputy Secretary of the Army Paul D. Kramer wrote that the Army intends to grant the easement to the pipeline sponsor, Energy Transfer Partners, no later than tomorrow afternoon. And additionally, Army officials indicated that they were terminating a plan to prepare an environmental impact statement on how the pipeline would affect land and water along its 1170 mile route. So that is one of the things that was set up when President Obama put a stop to the pipeline. There was going to be an additional uh, series of investigations into the effect that it could potentially have in the result of a spill or an accident on the water supply for so many people. Uh, that has now been cut off and it is likely that within 24 hours they will be back completing the final section of the pipeline. And uh, a it's lawyer representing uh, Earth Justice uh, is going to attempt to fight this. This is uh, John Hosselman saying, The Obama administration correctly found that the tribe's treaty rights, talking about one of the tribes uh, in the area that will be affected by the construction of the pipeline, needed to be respected and that the easement should not be granted without further review and consideration of alternative crossing locations. Trump's reversal of that decision continues a historic pattern of broken promises to Indian tribes and violation of treaty rights. They will be held accountable in court. And I'm sure that there will be an attempt, but this is the Trump administration so we know how that's and it's donald been. trump who when his casinos in atlantic city were going under was were, he was blaming indian tribes in connecticut mm -hmm. uh the the mohegan sun and the foxwoods, foxwoods which uh, are delightful casinos right for taking away atlantic city's business they probably did which they probably did and yeah. uh so he's a guy that we know holds a grudge i'm not saying this is what's behind it he asked for an expedited review of this mm -hmm. the obama administration said we have to have a review of this it could not have been done in this amount of time this was this was an agenda driven decision and it's a tragedy for for um, all the work that was put in there, and yeah. it, it's going to be very difficult for Earth Justice. I mean, they're really up against a a, a steep hill here because there is nothing, you know. The Obama administration stopped it, did the right thing, got the review, realized this is not the right path for this pipeline, but didn't say stop short of you know say, coming up with what their own plan was. And the Trump administration doesn't care. They're just going to go with what the court yeah. originally did. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose, so the problem here is that Earth Justice and other organizations uh, are going to attempt to stop it. But if it begins being constructed, then the pipeline could be done long before these, uh, these uh, uh, attempted stops go through the court system. And that's, that's what needs to be stopped. Theoretically, I guess some judge could step in. But we already had long periods last year where that could have happened, and it largely didn't happen. Yeah. There were multiple levels of review, but judges decided to generally uh, take a step back. And that's, I mean, look, we knew wh when he won, this was almost certainly going to happen. That's the scary thing. We didn't know how fast it was going to happen or the nature of how it would be done. But we, were knew, that it was, we knew that it was incredibly likely that it was going to happen. And John Hoban, who's the uh, Republican senator from North Dakota, um, is, uh, he's a big proponent of this. And he has a lot of other senators' ears on this because he was the governor there, he was a senator there, he is a senator there, and uh, he is really making sure that this, he has overseen the making sure that this is a priority yeah. for the White House to undo. And it's, um, he was against Keystone too. I mean, the guy's, he's not, he's not good. Um, but he's for I'm sorry, he was for yes. Keystone. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Well, actually, why don't we turn to a quote from him because uh, he wants to reassure us that the, that. That what's was, that? I didn't even know we had that. There you go, we do. Uh, one of the biggest concerns about the construction of the pipeline is that if, for the first time in history, a pipeline were to have some sort of leak, that that could uh, damage the water supplies that people rely on. Well, he's not worried about that. He said new energy infrastructure like the Dakota Access Pipeline is being built with the latest safeguards and technology. The latest safeguards and technology as uh, can be provided by energy transfer partners. And so I'm sure that with the, this advanced technology and safety features, we shouldn't have any cause for concern except that we do, uh, uh, based on some data that's been released. A report uh, released just today, in fact, with a partnership from DisasterMap.net, looks at reports that ETP filed to the National Response Center, which is a, a government organization uh, where oil spills uh, need to be uh, uh, reported to. The report lists from 2015 to 2016, 42 oil spills, 11 natural gas spills, nine gasoline spills, three propane spills, two other spills. God only knows what was 
other in that list of uh, ingredients, and two unknown spills. ETP doesn't even know what the fuck they just spilled in that case, in those two cases. The 69 accidents led to eight injuries and five evacuations, and that's just 2015 to 2016, and it produces a frequency of incidents of nearly three accidents every single month. And now, that's one year, just to reiterate, that's one year. Right. Well, that's 2015 to 20. Yeah, so technically, so, I guess one year. Okay, let's you know what. But let's say it's three years, right? Because it's not. It's, <laughs> it's like, not. It's like a third of that. But let's say it's yeah. three years. Those are astonishing numbers. Three How many evacuations. They five said evacuations? Uh, five evacuations. That's unbelievable. But but that's but that's crazy because this is the latest uh, the late oh, hold on. leak proof right. This <laughs> is the latest safeguards and technology from ETP, a responsible corporation, and as uh, as Michael pointed out, that's just one year. But I think perhaps more importantly, that's just one company. I mean, we've talked about the huge numbers of spills just in South Dakota over the past couple of years. Here it's specifically ETP, the corporation that's in charge and responsible for the Dakota Access Pipeline. They can't help but on a nearly weekly basis spill gasoline, oil, and unknown substances across the U.S. But John Hoven's not worried because they have the latest technology and safeguards. Well, that is going to be very reassuring to the people who might have to drink gasoline and oil and weird runoff and other and unknown in the near future. And, and the speed with which they did this, the Trump White House, that they did yeah. it a couple of weeks into the administration. Um, I, there was a, a reporter I talked to just after the inauguration. I asked him about DAPL, what's going to happen to DAPL. Uh, and he said he heard people joking that they, wanna, they want to get it going again while it's still cold to limit the number of protesters that are up there, which yeah. is absurd because it, it's been cold up there. Like, you know, it gets for two it's, years. It's warm for like an hour in North Dakota. Yeah, right? but the protesters uh, but been, remain. Yeah, the, but yeah, the po protesters remain and they were effective in the cold. So, and that, you know, and I don't know, this is not, this was not necessarily gospel, but this is what he had heard. And um, so they've known about this. They knew they were gonna do this right away. Yeah. And, and voters should have known about that in November because they weren't shy about it. Yeah. Yeah, and one other aspect on this that unfortunately we don't have as much information as I would like is uh, the economic financial involvement of our new president. And so we know that previously Donald Trump had owned uh, tens of thousands of dollars of uh, shares of ETP. We were reassured on December 5th of last year that he had sold off those uh, shares. We have been presented with absolutely no evidence. I have seen nobody provide evidence of that. So I suppose we have to trust him that he doesn't have a conflict of interest here. We'll see it in his taxes, because he'll have had to pay capital gains. Oh yeah, when yeah. he reveals his taxes, we'll see it. It'll be right and there. And so there is every reason to believe that he is going to financially benefit from the completion of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Just one of many conflicts of interest uh, brought to you by his coronation as the U.S.'s king. Fix the media, be the media, come join us. TYTnetwork.com slash join.